guys, I'm Andy. And I'm Chris. And today we're going to be talking about MCU Phase 2, so let's get right into it. So the first movie in Phase 2 is Iron Man 3, which came out in 2013. And this was easily one of my most anticipated movies of my entire life at that point. <laughs> the trailer got me so hyped and I was just so ready. Yeah, but then the villain sucked. And the movie was a major letdown. <laughs> yeah, Guy Pierce as the Mandarin. I'm the Mandarin. Spoilers, yeah. by the way, for all these movies. Yeah. But um, I hated that. It was so lame. The marketing made it seem like Ben Kingsley was going to be a badass villain. And then Guy Pierce just showed up as Aldrich Killian, and I hated it. Yeah, but I don't hate this movie. I know a lot of people hate Iron Man 3. It's not the best. Definitely in the bottom, but... I like the Iron Man, like, PTSD kind of storyline with the Avengers. True, that's a good storyline, and then the sequence where his house gets destroyed is good. Yeah, also the whole in battle with all of the little Iron Mans coming back. Yeah, that's awesome, but that's and, really in the plane scene. Yeah, and that was uh, the roadie, no, that was the Iron Patriot, and that was the bad guy in the suit. Yep. And then Iron Man was, like, using the tech. Yeah. He wasn't even in the suit, wasn't which I suit. hated that. Yeah. And they never even came back to that, thank God. Yeah. But aside from, like, a, a few cool action sequences, this movie really is a disappointment. Like, Yeah, it definitely is. It's the worst... Super forgettable. Well, actually, it's not the worst Iron Man. Iron Man 2. It is yeah. very forgettable. Mm -hmm. And I just, like, the kid in it is pretty funny. Like, his and Tony Stark's relationship mm -hmm. is pretty cool. But overall, this movie fell flat for sure. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of it, honestly. And I, I can't really go back and rewatch it nowadays. Yeah, no. It is, like, has, like, some good comedy in it, but not rewatchable at all. Yeah. So the next movie in Phase 2 is my least favorite movie in the MCU, <laughs> Thor The Dark World, which came out in 2013. Yeah, my least favorite <clears throat> as well. Super boring. Snooze fest. <laughs> oh yeah, and the whole beginning with like him fighting the rock monster is like, okay, cool, but like, really? Like, yeah. nobody really cares about that. And then you get introduced to the ether, one of the Infinity Stones. Holy crap, that storyline sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Malekith. Worst villain in the MCU. <laughs> so dumb. So I, bad. The Dark Jane Elves are movie, trash. Jane in this movie is kind of a B. I, I mean, I like Natalie Portman, but she just is like such a negative attitude in this movie. And I just feel like she did not want to be there. It displayed on screen. <sighs> yeah, this movie is a real long drag, and I really... I, I never go back and rewatch it. I rewatched it before Infinity War. That's the last time I saw it. Hell no. I did not rewatch this movie. It, it's just like... So boring to me, but and like the only good saving grace about it is Loki's storyline. Yeah, I thought that Loki was pretty cool, and like when he changes into Captain America, like bit of big applause. Mm -hmm. But like he fakes his death once again, and the ending is just confusing with him and Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, I agree. It's got a lot of repetitive story beats that we'd already seen from like the Thor movie, the first Thor movie. Yeah, and I'm really glad that they changed up Thor, um, like going forward because his little aesthetic in these movies was just not working. At yeah, all. I agree. So the next movie that we're going to be talking about is my second favorite of the MCU, Captain America, The Winter Soldier, which came out in 2014. Great damn movie. Oh yeah, I love this movie. It's, it's probably my favorite Captain America movie. I love Civil War, which we're going to talk about in the next video, but this one is insanely good. Yeah, I mean, I know in the last video I said that Captain America was my favorite character, and a lot of that came from this movie, because before, like, he was the kind of the Boy Scout, but in this movie, you see right from the opening scene on the boat, that he like really is a badass yeah the action in this movie is top notch and the russo brothers came in to direct it it's their first movie that they directed in the mcu and they go all out with it so many good action scenes whether it's on the bridge or whenever bucky and captain america are having their one-on-one -on -one fight mm -hmm. or the chase scene with sam jackson yeah. so freaking good I, I just love it and the elevator scene anybody want to get off yeah i just love it iconic line and then the score in this movie is so good too yeah that little like screech yeah. when bucky is running by the winter soldier is a pretty solid villain mm -hmm. and so is um alexander pierce yeah. i thought he was pretty good robert redford's really good in that role as the leader of hydra mm -hmm. and the whole shield becoming hydra was a really good plot point yeah is that a twist i didn't see coming yeah <laughs> i didn't either at all and it carried over from the first captain america yeah. but like made it modern mm -hmm. a great character in this movie is black widow definitely my favorite black widow performance she's so badass she's an awesome supporting character in this movie i just love seeing her interact with uh sam who's the falcon and cap yeah and her and steve have some great like back and forth like when they're in the mall together and they're like, oh, we're on our honeymoon. Or like <laughs> when they go to the underground thing and they find Arnim Zola on the computer, which is a pretty cool Easter egg. Yeah. They just they just work so well together. They're some of my favorite duo in the MCU, and mm -hmm. a lot of that comes because of this movie. Yeah, I agree. And then the ending of this movie is extremely emotional when uh, Bucky's fighting Cap. Yeah, I like the, that. On that ship up in the air, and then he's like, I can do this all day. Yeah, no, I think he's. Or says, I'm like, with you to the end of the line. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you to the end of the And line. Bucky saves him in the end. The Falcon is so cool in this movie. I love his suit. I love when he, like, catches the guy mm -hmm. falling off Sitwell. And, like, just, I love the Falcon in this movie. Maybe my Falcon 
favorite Falcon movie, but he's so good in that. Yeah, he is. And overall, this movie was just a spy thriller almost. And I really love the way they incorporated it into the MCU. Yeah, everything that they did in this movie is infinitely rewatchable. I love this movie, like going back and rewatching it. It just feels like such a comic book. Definitely the best action in the MCU. Mm -hmm. And Captain America is just such a G in this movie. Completely agree with everything you just said. So the next movie in Phase 2 is one that came out of nowhere for everyone, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy, which also came out in 2014. Yeah, 2014, damn, Marvel's best year, maybe. I completely... It is their best year. It, these two movies are some that really define the MCU, and Guardians used to be my number one. It's in my top five now, not my number one, mm -hmm. but I love this movie. I mean, we're just going to start off with the soundtrack in this movie. Locks you in for a fun time. It's just it's a so space adventure. Good. I have it on my phone. Yeah. Both this and Volume 2, the yeah. soundtrack is perfect. Mm -hmm. The best in the MCU, and... It starts off with that flashback with Star Lord. Mm -hmm. Star Lord, Chris Pratt, coming out of nowhere, doing this role great. Yeah, he was. An, I only know him from Parks and Rec, and I thought he was funny in that. And then he got jacked for this movie, and he's really great as Star Lord. Yeah, I love his performance in this movie. He's real funny, but also like a tough guy too, like cool with his mask on and everything. Mm -hmm. And the other Guardians, Gamora, I liked her a lot in this. Yeah, I like her. She's good. Zoe Saldana is great in the role. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Rocket and Groot. Who My are, favorite too. Yeah, love the Guardians. their duo is just so good. Rocket is the best guardian to me, but in this movie, I like to see, like, his, like, backstory, like, not really his backstory, but, like, seeing his back and mm -hmm. all that stuff, like, whenever they're showering, like, knowing that he was made to be like this, and he has some emotional parts, like, in the club later. Drax, pretty good, though, funny. Yeah, he's funny, but he's my least favorite guardian, probably. He's not my least favorite, Mantis is, even though she doesn't come in until the next one, but in yeah. this one, he is my least favorite, I guess. But actually, in this one, I'd say that he's really funny in this one. The, this movie, his funniness and stupidness works. Yeah, and the it, other ones, it doesn't for me. Yeah, he's kind of used as just comedy later on. Yeah, and uh, Ronan and Nebula and the uh, guy from all the movies mm -hmm. are in this movie and the, as the villains. And I thought they were pretty good. I'm not a fan of Ronan. He's actually one of my least favorite villains in the MCU. Yeah, he's pretty <clears throat> lame. He's just like a crybaby. Like, he wants the stones and... Nebula, though, to see how she, like, starts off as the bad guy, like, helping Thanos, who's in this movie. Yeah. Pretty briefly. cool when you see him, like, in his armor, sitting on the throne. I just liked all that stuff, but... Yeah, the ending of this movie is just awesome, though. I love it. It's like a big space battle with all the ships on mm -hmm. uh, Xandar, I think that's what yeah, it's called. Yeah, and Yondu's involved in it with his yeah, little arrow. Yondu's great. <laughs> Yondu's a great character. I love it. And him. then the final moments where there's, like, a dance battle, that's awesome. Yeah, and the best part of the movie, when they all hold hands, were the Guardians of the Galaxy, bitch. Yeah. I love that dang moment. So iconic. It's, it's It just gives me chills every time, and just seeing them go off into the space, and mm -hmm. Groot dies in this movie, and yeah. Baby Groot's dancing. Yeah. It's a good after credit scene. A really great setup for the second Guardians. Yeah, it really is, and def like I said before, in my top five. What about you? Top ten. Yeah. You like it. You definitely like it more than me, but I love the movie. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's super good. So the next movie we're talking about is the big one, Avengers Age of Ultron, which came out in 2015, and I was insanely hyped for this. I think everybody was. Yeah, it was my most anticipated of the year, for sure. Yeah, leading off all of Phase 2, mm -hmm. leading up to this moment, and then, of course, Avengers 1 was so great. And uh, I like this movie, but it is my least favorite Avengers movie. It's also my least favorite Avengers movie. The other three are just fantastic. This one is really solid, though, I think. I don't hate this movie at all. Yeah, I don't hate it. I mean, starting from the opening scene, seeing all the Avengers attack the Hydra base or wherever that is, I like yeah. that a lot. I really, really love the opening, and then you get... They get he gets the spear at the end, right? Tony mm -hmm. picks it up, and then it goes to Avengers. And you see um, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver mm -hmm. in the opening scene, too, like him and Hawkeye having that little back yeah. and forth. And then the Hulk getting tamed down by Black Widow was cool, too. Yeah, that was. But moving on from that, going into like the whole Ultron fight, and they met up with Ulysses Claw, and he got his arm chopped mm. off. I like that stuff, but Ultron as a villain was weak to me. Yeah, very lame. I feel like he just didn't have much to do. Yeah, it was, he was just a robot, and then he had all of his robot henchmen. And he wanted to like do world domination and yeah. drop a city on everybody, which is such a basic villain plot. Yeah. And how he was made was cool, like how he attacked Jarvis and then came at the party. Mm -hmm. I like the party scene a lot. Me too. Cap. Not just that hammer. <laughs> yeah. Leading into Endgame, which was cool to see. One part of this movie that I really love is the Hulkbuster fight, where Tony's in the Hulkbuster suit and he's fighting Hulk. Yeah, that's some great stuff, seeing him, like, say, go to sleep, go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I like that a lot. And it was just a cool battle. Like, Hulk got put under Scarlet mm -hmm. Witch's thing, which was interesting. Yeah, very good. And then another character that's introduced in this movie is Vision. Mm -hmm. Vision is pretty good in this movie. I don't love Vision as a character, but in this movie, he's really cool. He's badass. Like, I just love how that he's he has such a cool design, sleek, and then the Infinity Stone in his head. I love it. Yeah, and he lifts the hammer in this movie, too, which yeah. I wish he didn't do. <laughs> yeah. But he also takes out Ultron, and that final battle is pretty good, but like I said, it's just a basic 
building getting dropped on somebody, but Cap has some good moments in that, like giving them the speech, like if you die, walk it off. Yeah. Quicksilver, who does die, he does by die. saving Hawkeye, yeah. which was pretty good. Didn't and, see that coming. Yeah. <laughs> and emotional, not emotional, but like for Scarlet Witch, it was, and I felt bad for her. But seeing her like rip out Ultron's heart or whatever, that mm. was cool. Yeah. But overall, this movie is very entertaining and has some cool action sequences, but it kind of is forgettable. It is, yeah. It, it just falls is. under every other MCU movie that's great. Yeah, and I mean, there's some like good foreshadowing, like Hawkeye's family, mm -hmm. the whole like Civil War kind of setup with the tree chopping. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff is cool. But something I do love about this movie though is the ending, the final like five minutes, like whenever it shows the new Avengers yeah, and Cap comes that. out, Avengers cut. Yep, perfect. Gets, ending. Makes it save for the end game. So now we're gonna move on to the last movie in Phase Two, Ant Man, which came out in 2015. It was a complete surprise to me. Yeah, it was too. Coming after this movie, which I wish didn't end the phase two, but yeah. which whatever. But I thought that Paul Rudd fitting into this role was perfect. Yeah, I wasn't excited for this movie, but when I saw it, Paul Rudd as Ant Man was fantastic casting, and he was just so funny and charming. Yeah, this is one of the funniest MCU movies, and it's not just because of Paul Rudd. The yeah. supporting cast too, Luis. Michael Pena, yeah. he's so funny. <laughs> yes. So freaking funny. And the Wasp in this movie, introducing the Wasp, starting her off, I liked her a lot. Yeah, she's like kind of a hard ass in this movie. Yeah, she is. But I love how you get to see her character develop into a more likable person as the like movies go on. Yeah, like her emotion gets mm -hmm. more. And Hank Pym is pretty good, too. Yeah, he is. I liked him in Scott's He's an awesome mentor forth. role. Yeah, I, I actually really like him. Mm -hmm. and this movie is pretty entertaining. The whole heist feel to it, like him going in, getting the Ant-Man suit, mm -hmm. in the bath, in the shower. Yeah, I like that it kind of goes against the common MCU formula. Yeah. And I enjoy that. So, in this movie, the villain is really freaking cool. Yellow Jacket, I liked him a lot. I mean, he's not great, but his costume is cool. He's kind of an anti-Ant-Man, which is cool to see. Uh, he's not one of my favorite villains, but he fits this movie perfectly, I think. Yeah, he would be in my top ten villain just because, overall, MCU has some weak villains. And I didn't think his uh, motive was, like, world domination stuff. Like, he had some pretty, like, logical stuff. I, and when he, like, shrunk the little sheep or whatever it was, yeah. like, it was funny. He was just a dick. And then... In the end, Ant-Man, like, crushed him down and put him into the quantum realm, I think. Mm -hmm. So maybe he'll come back, which would be cool. One last thing I wanted to talk about in this movie is the cameo by Falcon. Probably one of the best scenes in the movie. It is the best scene of the movie, and I like it a lot, how Ant-Man and the Falcon have that little fight, and yeah. he says, don't let a cat find out about this. Yeah, I love it. It kind of sets up their relationship in Civil War. Yeah, and I just I just really liked that whole... Seeing the Falcon was a good little Avenger mm -hmm. to add into it. Overall, this is one of the more enjoyable movies in the MCU, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it is too. I think it's like in the top 15, not in the top 10, but the after credit scene in this movie got me hype as hell for Civil War. Oh yeah, I love it. It shows Bucky, right? Yeah, it does. And it, that's the scene from Civil War, mm -hmm. but I was just like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's going to be crazy. But yeah, enjoyable movie. Paul Rudd is really good in this role, and I like to see him develop as Ant-Man a lot throughout the MCU. Yeah, it was a great end to the phase. So that's a wrap for our MCU Phase 2 video. Yeah, pretty good phase. I think that it starts off pretty weak, but as it goes on, it really picks up and promising for phase three which is the best phase which we're going to be reviewing very soon yeah you guys can expect a phase three video coming soon but overall i hope you guys enjoyed this video please be sure to like it comment down below your thoughts on this phase what's your favorite movie from phase two be sure to let us know and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel it would mean the world to us and until next time we'll see you guys later see you guys